God morning. What is it? Oh, thanks. Water in the window. Oh, hallelujah. God mornings must go on, and I must keep continuing my life and doing what I'm doing. So I'm going to do what I'm doing and film God mornings at the same time. Um, God just blessed me with this, so I'm going to bless you with it. Uh, but I got to go put some real clothes on. I'm out here in my... Uh, yeah. I'll be back. Enjoy my garden. I do not choose what a wonderful mighty kind of prince to teach me. All I want is Jason just to go to walk with thee. Because I love him, I love him, I love him, and I know, I know he loves me. Woo! God morning. Oh my lord, the cameraman. Has you set up sideways. Hang on. Listen. Louise, uh, please do your best to square everybody up. Thanks. Uh, good morning. I had a, um, an epiphany. The Lord spoke to me. He got me on the right track. I've been, uh, okay, y'all know I got, whoa, mud, mud. Yes, I did that. Watered. It's yeah, good. Good job. All right. So y'all know I've got God morning for TV. Um, uh, that I've been announcing and unshackled going on Ripley Television Channel. And it's not just that. There's uh, 22 websites, um, sports websites, and news uh, news websites that this guy owns and operates. So. Um, he said he would throw our episodes on those along with, you know, the rest of his news and stuff and um, see if we can pick up some viewers. And so I went over there and shot my first episode. The equipment over there, I didn't realize was so outdated that um, I was going to get the uh, product that I ended up getting so it I kept it I haven't used it I haven't edited it it sounds like um, the audio was had a delay and a huge reverb room. a lot of reverb in a small room basically um, so we haven't used it at all but 
I, that that whole God morning I wrote, so I ended up being, and I never. We're doing thirty minute show, and um, I never. I think I, I was twenty eight minutes of reading, so two minute commercial. Not a bad thing. But anyway, um, as I'm walking out here in the garden, y'all know I'm a little bit weird, I guess, by now. Um, the stuff that really, the interesting stuff, the weird stuff, is uh, how I became that. That's what's cool. I'm when, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm all fresh to it, too, because amnesia uh, is disconnected from everything. So, um, like learning about me, I'm right there with y'all. I'm learning. I got plenty of evidence. See, I, I kept a lot of, a lot of, of uh, testimony. I journaled and audio recorded, and there's just a lot of my life on film. There's a lot of my life. There's a missing part, but that missing part where there's like, I was silent. When God gave me the first uh, message was from Psalm 78, and I put it in uh, the song Seven Bellow, and everyone heard it as Satan worship. I mean, including the, the secular engineer. When I first recorded it, I said, Hero, here, uh, give ear all my people to my law. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable. I will utter dark sayings of old. Do not hide them from your children and show the generations to come. As I said that, I come down into the, um, out of the vocal booth and the guy's like, man, that's some kind of like satanic prayer. God told me, son, for you to be like me, the church has to hear you as Satan. Beelzebub. Um, so I walk with Jesus, man. I've been told for a long time by people I love and trust very dearly, who've now learned a lesson about this, I'm sure, that uh, said God would never have uh, taken me into that place that I went. He never would have guided me. I, I was comfortable the whole way. You know, when, when uh, 2008 came around, I was telling my mom something was about to happen. I was trying to prepare everybody, and uh, they couldn't get it yet at that point. Then I had my head on collision, and then I zeroed out. So for the first time in my entire life, since I was 17, um, I started over with a fresh slate of faith. And nobody, nobody can, you know, amnesia of the spirit. You guys got it. Just don't know it. Anyway, uh, this is Word of God fulfilling itself in major, major, major ways now. I've lived long enough for it to happen. He said, be still and know. So that was, uh, that was the very first God morning, which um, I think what we'll do, since now I've told y'all, <clears throat> I'll go ahead and, and upload it and put it on social media and YouTube. Um, It'll be on YouTube. Let's just put it that way. And then we'll re-record it and you guys can see it in a, in a different fashion. But, <clears throat> so for today, I was walking out here and uh, man, I've been overwhelmed with my parents not being able to, to be in their home. The way, they, the way they need to live, how they know they live. So they'll make it happen as fast as it won't stop. So I, I've been, I've been doing the painting and then the, the people that was working with them did some pretty sketchy stuff. But um, just, I think old age is brain damage. I, I do, I do, I do. And um, a lot of the same symptoms. So I have mercy on everybody. But let me tell you something, man. I know this about my father and his wife. Don't mess with him. Don't have tiny it. Take advantage of whatever my father and mother offer you and, and run it home. I mean, harder than you've ever done anything. Perfecter than you've ever perfectered anything. But when you represent your love for God in the way you do your work, that's how we, I look at everything I do as this stuff. That's how I love God, man. This is, first, if y'all remember correctly, um, I called this my mental health garden. In Indiana, I had uh, three pepper plants, 
three pepper plants, and two tomato plants. And I could tell how my mental health was by how that garden looked. I spent a lot of time in there with it, talking, getting a lot of good messages from the Lord. And, and I've been, uh, I've neglected this garden for, I don't know how long, probably two weeks because of, well, I came in and got all the dirt, all the weeds and grass out of it and uh, watered it a few days and then right back to forgetting about it. And um, when when you forget about your carnal mind, and that's, that's, this is some wonderful creation of God. This is my food, this is my nutrition. Y'all don't know what I'm doing with this stuff in this garden yet, but you will, and as you see it, and you watch what happens and the miracles and the healing and, and uh, holy, he's holy, he's holy. So I walked out here this morning and um, I'm praying, well, I, to me, I, all of a sudden I went from praying to talking to myself because out of the corner of my eye, I saw over here in the chair, uh, um, a figure sitting in, a man sitting in the chair. <clears throat> And then, man, I have the spiritual eyes that I sometimes remain in, and everything else around it goes in out of focus, and I see in the spirit that way. And so as I turned to focus in and see what kind of man this was, I imagined it was Matt. That's what my feelings were. I said, Matt, isn't that work yet? And it was Jesus. It disappeared. I know it was. It was uh, as soon as I focused, whoo, and then the Lord said, I walk with you in the cool of the garden from the very beginning. In the cool of the day. I walk with you in the garden in the cool of the day. So, um, <clears throat> the cool of the day, let's say. Uh, I sweat like crazy. Matt got baptized yesterday, and on the way there, he started asking me if I'd pray that God would close his sweat glands up. And I said, son, you want to be like Jesus, he's a sweating machine. That's how you get all them toxins out of you. Close them sweat glands up, you'd be full of bells, bud. Um, and Jesus, see, he walks with me. Now he just showed up here. It's cool of the day. The Lord of God, when you realize that it fulfills itself and you open, you don't limit God. Oh, the messages I've got right now that God's given me. I mean, the scripture is coming out at me and I got it in me, so I mean, Lord, but God Almighty, my mom and daddy shoved the Bible, the Holy Bible, so far up my hind end, it ended up in my heart. They were great parents. I'm telling you, I, I, my wife says it could not have happened to a better, a better man, somebody with what I have that's just completely lost in 2018, 19, like God, have no idea who I am or what I'm connected to or what. Boom! The Word of God come alive. I mean, Prue got to see it. I come up out of that body sound chair uh, speaking in tongues. Hey, see all that? Uh, so Sam's been on a chain for about a week and a half. Barely let off of it. He runs back and forth. Or she, sorry, she. Female dog. I got a little confused, I suppose. I want people who claim that it's theirs to show me by telling me what gender it is. You know what I mean? Because uh, people want the things that I have. I'm, you know what? I'm a guy that I'll fight for my crown, man. The blessings of the Lord come upon me because I fight for them. The violent take it by force. I know what I'm doing when it comes to fulfilling the Word of God. Now, this is what I want to get to, to, through to you. Because the Word of God fulfills itself to me, when I see that figure in there, and I thought it was Matt, and then I thought it was Jesus. Uh, you have an opportunity at this point. Look, here, here's the... Um, you got the Holy Ghost. I've always thought that not everyone is equal. When it comes to intelligence... Uh, uh, Abilities, I look and say opportunities. Someone took an opportunity, therefore their gift expanded. When someone works really well with a gift, seamless, there's practice to it. 
this flesh is always in the way. Just like this garden, it's feeding me. I mean, this is healing. This is what God told me if I would do, I would be healed. And I'm skipping it. I'm skipping it. I'm neglecting this to do what? Take care of my mom and dad's issues because that's on my mind. That's hard. Jesus said, let the dead bury the dead. <laughs> he also said, uh, honor thy mother and father. So I'm going to tell you something. Here's what I also know. You show everyone. You show yourself. God already knows how much you love him. God already knows how much you love other people. God knows exactly how much you love yourself. He knows things that you will never, ever know about yourself. Unless, unless you start owning up the things you are. Unless you start being honest. You stand up right before God, before Judgment Day. Every part of what you're like lying to yourself about. Oh no, that ain't sin. I mean, you got, it, your carnal mind is iffy information. Get this through your head. Your carnal mind is is rush is roulette. You say, I'll take fifty dollars on black. Bing, red. Ah, oh, I lost fifty bucks. Oh, but here's how the car of mine work. Watch. I'll take fifty bucks on black. Bing, black. Hundred dollars. Yeah. Wow. I just doubled my money. I'll take fifty dollars on red. Bang. Bing, red. Another. Wow. I'll take three hundred on up. Bing. Ah. But it's iffy, because at any moment, it goes, eh, other side, and you lost it all. And you didn't just lose the first $50. Now, what you've lost is this imaginary winning that you thought you had, and he stole from you, the enemy. The carnal mind is your enemy, and the enemy is the thief. And these weeds, I don't know what they are. They're iffy. Now, all these other little plants in there, I know exactly what they are and what they're producing. I didn't have to gamble. When I put this tomato plant in the ground, I didn't go, I wonder if it's going to be a cherry. No, I know why it's, it's there's a little label down there with that seed. Um, now, some of the seeds that we planted in these little containers turned out to be wheat, and I planted it right in the center of my garden. There's an empty spot over there where we finally plucked it out. Big, beautiful weed. We don't know what it was. Iffy. So your carnal mind is full of iffy information, meaning you conclude things you're ignorant about. You should never have a conclusion and an opinion of stuff you don't know anything about. Let me tell you something. That most of the people that I listen to in this area, in every area I've ever traveled to, talk about stuff they know nothing about. It's heavily, heavily, heavily done by folks who are untraveled. Because folks that travel beyond their own, uh, you know, if you stay here all your life, your perception of what the world is, is by other people's stories, TV, now the internet. So you don't, you don't truly know. And it's all, it's all perception. And the devil is having a heyday with ignorance. That's what the devil is. He's ignorant from the day he's the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Just some knowledge of good and evil tempted Eve. That tree of knowledge, as many as they ate, why well, say, oh, it's going to make you wise. It's called the knowledge of good and evil. It's a lie. It's a setup. healthy, we can be the most blessed folks in the world, or we can be the ones catching the wrath. We're in the end time, and so you ain't got anything but this or this. The wrath of God's coming, y'all. There's seven bowls. I don't know, you guys all think you're getting pulled up out of here when the great tribulation before it happens. 
Hey, better get your bags packed in. I believe that's 2026. I believe that's the first year. We got seven more years to 2033. 2033 will be 2,000 years since Jesus died on the cross and resurrected, which is the third day, midnight. <clears throat> That's how I believe. You know man knows the day nor the hour, so you know a day with God's a thousand years. Get it? So we're at midnight of the third day here coming up soon. Principalities and powers on high places. This is a spiritual life you're living in a physical carnal world that was a lie to you by the tree of knowledge of good and evil. The minute they ate of it, ignorance hit them. And they tried to conceal it from an almighty God who has spent time in the cool of the day, in the garden, every single day of their created lives. Do you get it? It's ignorance. So to be ignorant, I'll show you really quick how fast and easy it is to catch your ignorance. If you're talking about something that you know nothing about, but you're talking about it like you know, that's ignorant. Because you're committing a lie. You're false. It's, it's uh, oh, come on now. Go look it up in the King James Version. You'll see. There's a name for it. I don't, I, you're not going to hear me or you're going to hear me. Most of the folks that I'm speaking to are inside the church. Because that's who I'm hanging out with the most. But I'll tell you what, I just spent, and let the church wake up and hear this. I just spent two decades out in the world and the same nonsense and ignorance is being done no different than the world. I wasn't shocked. I left the church for that purpose, for that reason. God told me to do something, I did it, and I was of the devil. And what I was doing was what Jesus told me to do and what he did. He was led by the Spirit of God into the wilderness to be what? Tempted of the devil. God didn't tempt him, the devil did. Oh, but he was led into the wilderness. What do you think uh, it took them from the children of Israel, all of a sudden got lost, 
on this little however many couple miles stretch it was to get over to Canaan's land when they left and they're going through Egypt and that 40 years they circled in a tiny little spot why because they were led by the fire and the cloud the Lord Almighty he's led me through my entire life and the, the fact that I'm here today is evidence of it and the stuff that I'm, I'm beginning to unfold and teach you will help you to fulfill the word of God. Now, I, I, I'm, I've, I've, I've come back on two different occasions without any, without any faith. No, it's amnesia. It's gone. I have no memory. It's, it's finished. And he come to me. He came to me in New Mexico in the hospital. And then 33 years later, or hang on, 17, 38. In 2019, he came to me again. Same life. Amazing. Um, so today, I saw him sitting in that chair, and he said, I walk with you in the cool of the day. So this is what I'm doing. God morning is going to be either here or in my office. And as God speaks to me, um, to my heart, I'm going to teach what he's sharing with me to you. So the carnal mind is iffy information. It's weeds. All right? This field is not the kingdom of God. You need to be in the kingdom. What I'm talking about with the kingdom of God, letting the tares and the, and the wheat grow together, the, the angels of the Lord harvest and separate. It's this, it's this um, net that I've been talking about that God gave me that's going to cover the earth. And it separates the fish you don't want. It does all the selection. I'm not involved in any of it. So what God showed me happening on this property this last year, as I expelled people off this land, the, the view of it from outside is I'm, I'm, I'm trying to tell people they can't, they can't do it. I ain't having it, I ain't doing it, I ain't being it, no. When in fact, I'm giving them opportunity, each one, knows every detail and I've recorded it. So every opportunity given to remain and I teach them how to remain and and as as I'm I, I lay down the law of the Lord they line up or they lie. They they do they do not see the rod and the staff comforting them and they depart. Darkness please. So the carnal mind, the weeds, the iffy information, this is why it is severely important for you as a being to remain solid, stand firm. Your language, your words, better, you better remember that there's a book of life, that God has every detail. He's the best record keeper on the planet. And he rewards openly what someone does in private. And I'm gonna tell you something. Y'all thinking about money. Um, the carnal mind is something that you, like when I come out here and cleaned all that grass out and the weeds out, all empty information gone. Took me about an hour, hour and a half. A lot of this. Dun, 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 dun. And uh, plus I'm using a hole that, you know, isn't sharpened. I saw what Matt did with that sharpened hole and I want it, man, I think it would be broken. Um, the carnal mind is if the information. You sit and you come up with these conclusions about people because of the way you think they are. You think, you have an opinion about how everyone is and you voice it by how you act, how you, I mean, you, the, the ability for people to truly act um, is the only thing is they think they're good, okay? People think, you you think you're, no one knows, okay? But I'm gonna tell you something. The carnal mind has so many folks wrapped around its finger because what you commit, you commit and conclude with your carnal mind. You see with your carnal eye, you commit, you conclude with a carnal mind. You see, you hear with carnal senses, 
you fill with carnal senses and you conclude it's right. It's truth. It's Jesus. It's false. And it will take you to hell. Torment. You're here, uh, this revival, this harvest, what God showed me is happening right in front of my eyes. So the angels of the Lord have reaped. And there's kingdom, the wheat, and there's the burning pits of hell where there's great gnashing of teeth. And it's happening. Completely right in front of my eyes. The angels reap. Oh, wow. And they stayed in the kingdom. They were all in, in inside the field the entire time taken care of. Um, as I would remove someone, as people might know, off of the property and say, no, you can't stay out here any longer. Um, I think a lesson needs to be known. The first time I did that, I called my pastor and said, hey, Dan, I, I, I kicked this dude off. And should I have done that? What should I do? He said, no, I don't think you should have. Um, can't do that uh, I said okay I'm gonna I'm gonna listen to my pastor and that felt good to do what he told me to do um, it was against myself so it feels good to go I, I consider it a blessing to be guided by the head of me so because I was guided by the head of me when I was removing folks off this land I didn't say they can't go to church I didn't say there I didn't say none of that uh, I concluded that you're going to learn a lesson by not being a part of this out here because I have to have pure hearts. I have to have people who are, are already repentant. I'm ready to move and heal and, and, and I can't surround myself with falsehood. There you go. There's that, there's that King James. Version. Falsehood. Um, I can't. Um, I got enough weight on my shoulders dealing with the legions of suicide. I don't need anything else because I'm in a I, I'm a warrior and I'm taking demons out, and th those demons are inside of human beings, okay, all over this place, and I refuse to have any demons on the, my land. So the carnal mind, enemy, demon, liar, Lucifer, in the tree, conceal it, call it truth, cover it up, hide yourself from the presence of the Lord. Ignorance. Only an ignorant spirit would cause anybody who's been in the presence of God to choose that nonsense over the real thing. So walking through this garden today, Jesus spoke to me. And I'm delivering it to you every day of my life. Jesus speak, spoke to me from way, way, way back. 17 years old when it first came to me in the light and said, I got something greater for you to do. And you know what that was for me to do at that point? Document. Record. So what? I could testify. What's a good testimony without the evidence? I mean, I could just be a big talking man. You know what I mean? Y'all have a good morning. Come back next week.